Hi Hustle users, in this video we're going to give an overview showing how to define a merit function and then customize it, uh, use our variables, and then optimize. And it's going to show how easy it is to do this in the program to optimize a lens. So we're going to do this in two steps. The first one is to take a, a library lens that we have and just uh, make some changes and things to prepare it for the optimization. So we include these steps so you can follow along. And then the second set, we're actually going to define the merit function, customize it, then we're going to uh, use some very uh, define some variables and then do optimization. So we pull up the program now. The lens we're going to use is actually contained in the public directory and then lens then you go to library toolbox and it's this Hopkins zero uh, one zero lens so that's the lens right there I just cleared that window from old data uh, here's actually a picture of the lens and here's a plot of its MTF curves so if you look here it's pretty clear that this uh, lens is going to uh, use some uh, vignetting so we need to set up some vignetting factors we have an entire video dedicated to this subject that you can also watch so here we're just going to define uh, check the first surface and check the tenth surface and then we go here to optimize and it's a support routine to set up the bundles to do this so go to vignetting analysis we want to copy the information to draw as well as the field point set so we hit OK on that you can see it hasn't really affected the performance much the picture changes a little bit if we go here to our field point set which we're going to use later in optimization uh, and make sure we have it on advanced you can see that it's actually not tracing from the minus one normalized coordinate to the plus one in the pupil it's actually uh, taking some vignetting factors into account so that's our first step uh, the next thing I'd like to do because I'm gonna need the magnification number later in particular is just uh, do the paraxial constant so now I have this lateral magnification in this B4 cell so that's prepared for later now uh, this lens is set up where we actually aren't using a paraxial solve and uh, we have an extra surface here that we really don't need so I'm just going to get rid of that surface and set up a paraxial solve you could uh, also spend some a little bit of time uh, getting the lens to be exactly the same as it was before in terms of the distance from the last lens to the image plane I'm just not bothering it didn't really affect the performance uh, much so I'm, I'm gonna skip that step for the video so you could do it if you did want to though of course uh, now we also uh, if you look when we try to draw it it doesn't really quite draw in the same way so it's sometimes reasonable to put a uh, excuse me we go to surface control general and we force it to draw that surface you don't need to do that I'd kind of like to do that in this particular uh, case and you can see now that surface is being forced to be drawn even though it's an air surface so to speak that of course is where we would put our sensor or whatever we're using to evaluate the image in this case so the last step is uh, the whole purpose of this exercise is going to be to modernize this lens so you can see these these have some old glasses we want to take and replace the old glasses with new glasses from the same catalog we also want to take uh, these other glasses that aren't from the same supplier glass supplier and put and make them the same glass supplier as uh, this first lens so we go here to catalog these are actual Hara what you want to do first is you want to set this to a model glass this OSLAM2 and then you go and fix it what fixing it does is it'll pick that catalog and fix it to the nearest glass that there is so it turns out there is a modern version of SLAM2 if you already knew that you could also just type in SLAM2 we could also use pickups on these glasses we can set for example a pickup here 
and we can set a pickup according to say surface one just showing you some different ways to do this be careful with these pickups of course because if you change a glass later and you only wanted to change one uh, you don't want to cause yourself a problem by actually changing both of them instead of just one so we're going to do the same type of exercise now with these other glasses so here is the uh, we go to model for this sf11 and we are going to want to take that shot glass and instead use uh, in this case nohara glass so that's stih11 yes hyphen tih11 and uh, we also have this S, these two SK15. I'm going to do this trick with the pickup in this case and make the pickup surface 8. Kind of smart to do it this way because now I know I haven't uh, caused a problem for myself there. Now we go and we can do, again, a model glass, glass 8. And now we do a fix for this to O'Hara. Now that's done, I take a quick look. Well, my vignetting factors have slightly changed in this case. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run the vignetting factors again, even though it doesn't say to do that in the instructions. Uh, that's all right to run that again. It really doesn't harm anything. There we go. And now you can see the performance has actually dropped because if I go and calculate it out to 200, it's actually a little bit worse than it was before. And we would like to get that back to the same performance, and that's going to be our optimization exercise. So now we're going to move to the optimization portion. I'm going to green check mark so that I have a version of this ready in case I uh, mess anything up. So now we have the lens ready to go. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually generate uh, an error function here. So the error function we're going to use, this is the workhorse error function, is the spot size wavefront error. So we go here, I want to use the current field sampling because we've got our vignetting factors. So if you're going to do this sort of a thing and you have some field points already defined and are using vignetting factors, just be really careful with that button or it'll just use some new uh, field points and may not save the kind of data you want. We're going to keep all of the rest of the parameters as the defaults uh, for the sampling methods and we have a rotationally symmetric system so we don't need to trace the full pupil we are going to switch this to the wavefront error we're going to use the uh, chr dmd operands this is for color correction purposes this lens actually we're going to have this at one percent i can move this out of the way and just show this if we were to look at the distortion you can see it's about one percent so it's pretty reasonable for us to go ahead and use 1% here uh, for our target. So we just go ahead and uh, click the distortion on and then it, its default was 1%. And then we wanna generate some edge thickness operands in this case. It shouldn't be moving that far away, but this prevents crossovers of surfaces at the edges. Early in our design, it's okay to certainly let that happen and uh, sometimes you do that and, and you can then fix those surfaces later to prevent uh, the ray crossovers um, but in this case we're just going to put it in we don't want to append to an existing error function because well, we haven't defined one yet so now we have our uh, merit function defined our error function defined i can hit this ope or type in the ope command if we go up to here, you can see the OPE command has run. And it gives us a number of different targets. There's these statistical targets um, for the spot size. Here's the DMD distortion. A couple thickness uh, ones are actually currently uh, being violated uh, in the, by, the, um, by the system. If we were to look, we haven't really done anything to change any performance yet. So that has created our merit function. Uh, our error function was pretty easy to do. We are missing one thing, however. And the one thing that we happen to be missing is we've done nothing to constrain first order properties. Uh, in this case, this is a finite conjugate lens. Uh, as you can see here, the front working distance is a little, almost 242 millimeters. And then we're at about 52 millimeters in the back. So we're actually going to constrain with the uh, transverse magnification in this case. And much earlier, uh, I had actually made sure to type in uh, this praxial constant uh, command. So here we've got the praxial constants command. Right now you can see that's uh, cell B11. 
So what we want to do, uh, and actually using the cells with doing what I'm going to do isn't actually going to going to work. I do need to remember what this number is. So if we look, it's five threes and a one, and it's negative, of course, because we're forming a real image through this system. We have our object defined as a negative value, so we're ending up positive here in our image. Just all things that we can observe as we go along. And now what we want to do is uh, we want to customize our merit function. So to do this, if you go to optimize and operands, it's also the OSE command, we're going to create a surface before uh, a parameter before. Now, uh, I pretty chronically don't remember all of the parameters on all of these operands and if you hit the question mark button here you go to generating an error function and click on this operands and you see I've already clicked on this that's why it's purple and then we go to the components and then this is going to be a system component it's this transverse magnification the key is you don't have to always specify every one of these for example this transverse magnification we do not have a multi configuration lens this isn't a zoom lens or anything so we just need to define a first surface and a last surface uh, and then the uh, we don't have to put in that last number we could put a one in for it and it wouldn't cause us a problem but to form this operand it's given a weight of one I'm just cutting and pasting or copying and pasting it in. Oops, and then messing it up. Copying and pasting it in, and then if I come up to here, I'd clicked on the cell instead. That was a boo-boo. Uh, I believe we have 14 surfaces here. I'm going to double check that in a minute. And of course, we want to start off at zero. So this is the transverse magnification from the object zero to what I believe is the image surface, which is 14. And we're not done yet, by the way. I'm just checking my surfaces. Yes, that is indeed correct with 14. Now, that is not a correctly formed operand here. If we were to check out the uh, operand performance, you can see we have a, a big issue that we're not trying to get zero magnification. We're trying to make it equal uh, this value that we had entered in. Or, or not that value, but we're trying to make it equal to the value that we know it should be, which in this case was... 0 point and then we had two, three, four, five threes, and then a one I did a plus because we want the magnification transverse magnification to be a negative value so that when we add it add in this other value the value of this operand is zero this is the key to customizing all of our merit functions you just need to know what operand you're looking for and then there are it's a pretty straightforward exercise to add in operands or change operands around as you see fit so that's our customization step now if we go and hit here you can see that we have a pretty a very small value for this constraint but we need to have that constraint for our first order properties okay so that's our merit function that we've now uh, defined and customized so at this point, we just go to variables. Again, let me just show under the lens spreadsheet editor. I'm going to green check mark out because I like what we've done. Then I'm going to hit uh, this variables. We're going to vary all curvatures here. And uh, we're going to vary all air spaces. We're not going to bother with the glass thicknesses. Now, one thing uh, just as tidiness, this is my manufacturability part, is I'm eliminating any curvature that's zero. There's actually... Uh, two surfaces in this lens that are actually zero uh, curvature in other words they're flat and it's this uh, back part of the first element and then uh, this uh, later one near the very very end I think those are the only two there are some that are relatively close to flat but not uh, identically flat you can see the radius of curvature being zero is the indicator uh, for that Okay, so radius curvature of zero, of course, doesn't exist. Oslo does this funny thing with uh, curvature that uh, if the radius of curvature is flat, it actually sets it to zero in the spreadsheet, even though it's, it's infinity. So don't be confused by that. Those two surfaces are flat, and I've eliminated them from the variables uh, set. Now, the other thing with the variables that I forgot to mention is when we clicked on these buttons, we just went with these default values, uh, which bound the variables. And it's good to have bounds on certain variables to make things physical. Sometimes you may want to turn bounds off. There's different things that we do when we optimize. So we just use the default. 
very easy. So now we've already set up our merit function. We've customized it. We have our variables ready to go. So we're ready to optimize. I'm uh, taking and just looking at uh, a couple of metrics here. We'll just go ahead and look at through focus MTF and we're looking at through frequency MTF in this case, even though we're using wavefront error. By the way, we picked wavefront error because this was a pretty well corrected lens. Sometimes spot size is used for less well corrected. And then there's other custom uh, sort of targets you can put together. So now to optimize, we're going to just look at uh, not, we're not going to look at any of these uh, specialty or, or alternative localized optimizers or the global search and global optimization methods, global explorer and adaptive simulated annealing. Instead, we're just going to run iterate. Now, iterate is damp least squares. It's the workhorse uh, in the industry. So if I click on that, so again, that was under optimize and iterate. Uh, there's a number of options that just give you different data that it actually puts out. I'm going to go ahead and keep all the defaults here and hit OK. And you can see that the value of it went from this 0 0.198150 and did drop down. Uh, if we want to take a look here, you can see that the uh, MTF curves have improved a little bit. And the through frequency, uh, it's actually um, made the axial uh, bundle in this case line up. This is actually a very, very nice lens a very well designed uh, lens that I chose for this example. And so now what you have is you have a lens that has modernized glass. It's modernized. It's got current glasses in it. Uh, we've used the optimizer. The performance is good. And then if you wanted to alter this around to some custom application you have, you're ready to do it. So as you can see, we did a lot with this. We did a lot of preparation for the lens just so that you could follow along. But it only took a few minutes for us to set up that um, canned merit function uh, to modify it so that we include the first order of targets to find some variables and then to optimize this was uh, this shows how easy also makes makes it for you to solve these problems